Uh, Mike and Cindy, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. Um, you guys recently went through Fair Play 101. If you could start off with just uh, what's your family situation look like? Where in the world are you? Um, what kind of careers do you guys have? Yeah. So um, we're in the Kansas City area. I'm a veterinarian, so I'm in practice part-time, and I also do workplace conflict research. So I also help people in the helping professions figure out workplace conflicts so they don't burn out and so that they stay in their professions and perform better for their, their clients and patients. Yep, and I'm in IT. I, I do sales and I try to help people make the internet go faster. And we've been married for 11 years, together for 15, and we have two kids, two boys, one seven and one's five. Beautiful. Um, and what was what was the initial um, reason that you wanted to jump into Fair Play 101? Yeah, so we had started Fair Play. So I had read it. I'm a huge reader and I'd really loved it. And Mike, to his credit, like had, had actually helped me start implementing it a bit before the pandemic. And we had kind of ended up feeling a bit overwhelmed. And I, I think we had started implementing the cards, but Mike had never really actually read the book. Um, I'm definitely the reader of the two of us. Mike tells me all about <laughs> movies and I tell him all about books and that's how we divide that labor usually. Um, so I actually asked for Mother's Day whether or not this would be something he'd be willing to do with me to kind of help hold us accountable and give us some external accountability for getting through the book and kind of revisiting that and getting back into the swing of things because COVID was so overwhelming that I still remember there was one day we were sitting down and, and working on it and you were just like, my brain, like we just can't handle working through any more of these these minimum standards of care. What was COVID? I don't remember. It's like our brains yeah, have just blocked it out. <laughs> uh, so, so you guys had some familiarity with it. You guys have tried implementing it and it seems like some of the accountability outside of yourselves was kind of missing for you to be able to uh, implement it well. Um, what what has been your experience with the program and what it's kind of given you to be able to implement it? I think the one of the things that I've really enjoyed is where there are people who are new to it. When we first started doing it, you know, there's a deck of cards, there's a hundred cards. It seems like very overwhelming. And part of the thing about the program that I've really enjoyed is as other people have started to do this, I think when we began, we may have gone a little too fast. We may have been like, okay, there's a hundred cards. We need to go through this. And having us kind of re-go back, having us go back again and kind of slow down and be like, okay, do we get, you know, out of a hundred, can we do a subset of that? Can we focus on these? Can we get the minimum standard of care of these? Watching other people also do that has been, has helped us reinforce what I think we were trying to do at the beginning with the cards and going through the program. Yeah. And I know one of the things you expressed to me that you thought just like in and of itself made it worth it was starting the structure to support implementation. So like you said to me, you're like the boring meeting, like having that accountability for doing the boring meeting every week, like was worth the whole thing. Real quick to people watching, uh, they just referenced the boring meeting. Uh, that is what I help uh, participants stay accountable to is having a weekly meeting with their partner. We call it the boring meeting in our home. And I've sort of branded it that way because my wife finds it endlessly boring to talk about the tasks to do's and the minimum standard of care around our home. You can rebrand it however you want. That is just the title that we often give it. Um, a lot of people don't love that and they they call it something else, but that is what they're referring to. 100%. Yeah, because yeah. it was a good space for us to have positive interactions about supporting our domestic life. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also asking me as the, the dude to put that together has, I, I think that's been fantastic. And one, it keeps me accountable it also helps me, it helps both of us understand some of the logistics and some of the, the mental load stuff that we need to accomplish on a weekly basis. It's been great. And like, you know, we use that time, we, we get a babysitter, she comes out, we use that time, we go out for an hour, grab, grab some dinner, talk about it. It's been, it's been fantastic. It's one of, it's, it's easily been like one of the best things we've done this summer. Yeah. And I, and Zach, I think during the course, you made a really good point that I think ended up being completely true, which is that sometimes we don't, see the our partner's invisible labor either that like if we're the first one the first actor taking action on something we don't necessarily see their mental labor and that they are thinking about it and they are carrying some of that and because Mike was leading the charge on that boring meeting and creating the agenda it did help 
give some visibility for me as to the fact that, oh, he did have that, you know, uh, roofing and the dentist and our finances on his mind as well. And so that I think was really helpful and, and validating too. Now, I know that uh, a handful of the couples that might be coming in, uh, you know, the the mom is probably wanting to do this and dad's like, sure, honey, uh, I guess we could do that. Mike, I, I mean, it sounds like you were somewhat already leaned in, you know, was there some level of uh, annoyance or like defensiveness or anything that you kind of had to get over to be a part of it? And or was it, you know, I think some people might have been week two to like, okay, like I, I'm seeing the value here. Uh, no, everything was fine. <laughs> no, you know, so, you know, one of the things we've tried to do, well, I've tried to do in our marriage is, you know, I grew up in a very traditional family where my dad worked, you know, he worked four days a week, 10 hours a pop, and then he had days off. My mom worked nine to five. And for both of them, they never really, that's what they did. That was just their job. That was their life, stuff like that. And like in our marriage, like Cindy has a, on top of being a veterinarian, she also has this passion project that's going to become her business of conflict management. And, you know, we've always tried to make space to make that happen. I think sometimes what, you know, what this course helped me understand is I think a lot of things just sort of do fall, de default to, you know, the, the, the other spouse, the, 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 the wife just taking over things. And I, and I was almost like disappointed in myself that we've, we've done this thing where we're in terms of work, we've tried to make the space to make this happen. And there's still, Oh, well, you know, somebody would pick that up. And it's like, who's the somebody it's like, you know, it's, it's not me. And so, so part of this is, you know, making sure that our kids see that as a dude, you know, we have part of the implementation of all this stuff that I can handle birthday parties that I can, you know, do stuff at school that I can take them and do, um, you know, you know, make sure food's cooked and the dishes are done and, and stuff like that. Sorry, I'm rambling. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> You were but, saying that, like a huge part of it is that I think you grew up have, seeing a pretty typical patriarchal dynamic. And it sounds like one of the things that your sons are seeing is that you're much more capable probably than you saw your father as. Um, and this was a good structure for you to kind of lean yeah. into that version of yourself that you were working towards. Yeah, just, you know, want to be better than that. You know, you know, if things over generations are getting a little bit better. Hopefully this is a pivot point so they can see that and in their relationships in the future, it can be better for them as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's, that's important for both of us, for our kids to see that. And, and yeah, and you know, like I, I was you know, just, uh, here's where my, the train's back on the track. Yeah. Just like disappointed in myself too, that we were, you know, we were talking the other day and it was like, Hey, um, before we got married, I was a functioning adult. And, you know, it's like, I was able to do laundry, I was able to cook, I was able to pay the rent and stuff like that. And, you know, when you think about like the classes you go into before you have a kid, they're like, they're very much, oh, how to change a diaper and blah, blah, blah. Like, wouldn't it be great if they just gave you this deck of cards and was like, your life at this point was the first 30 cards, okay? Your life is about to add another 40 cards. Like, let's have that discussion of what that looks like. Because mm -hmm. even though you love somebody, it, do it doesn't mean you really understand like, hey, what is about to happen here? And you know, the cards, you know, thinking about where other people are, hearing how they're struggling, how that can be improved in our marriage. It's just like really beneficial. Like I wish they took this deck of cards and it was like, this is single you. And then it's like, this is now married you, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you actually had a discussion of what that would look like rather than get into it and then kind of be blindsided by what is about to happen. And, I don't think either person really can have that discussion because it is, it sort of just like comes out of the blue. It, you know, and maybe not having a discussion about this is what leads to rates of 50% or higher divorce. People aren't able to negotiate this. Like having this, having this discussion with someone you care about, making sure that it reduces tension within the home and in relationship, maybe that's like the magic that we're missing that could reduce you know, some of these divorce rates that we see, like, I feel our marriage is a whole lot better after having this rather than like holding a, a grudges and I don't know, but the, uh, I'm rambling again. Yeah. No, you're good. So you're saying just now that things feel better than they were a couple months ago, maybe on mother's day, what would you say? I, 
I think that the experience people have is they get better at conflict resolution. Now, this is something, Cindy, that you do kind of full time and like professionally. So how do you feel like the two of you have been forced? What kind of things have you been forced to do that have improved the dynamic between the two of you? Yeah, so I think um, one of the things I say regularly in my conflict work is that clarity helps reduce conflict. And I think having, getting on the same page about what our values are and having a discussion about how our values, where they're similar, where they're different, how that plays into what, what cards are important, like what things we choose to take on for our domestic workload and how we want to take them on. It's been a really great structure for us to then have discussions about these things. And um, I am a big fan of the Gottman's work as well. I use that not only for us, but also in my conflict work at large, because it's some of the best research-based stuff out there on conflict. And I feel like Fair Play is a really, really great partner for like whatever other counseling people are doing because again it gives that structure to say like okay these are the things that are important to us these are the things that we're getting frustrated about how do we get some clarity about taking those values taking what's important and then like coming up with a solution to how we can actually implement um, and negotiate and come up with a compromise for how we move forward um, given those values that we have so I think that's been really helpful um, if it's okay, Zach, can I actually respond too to something else I noticed when it came to the hurdles from the negativity around the masculinity piece? Um, so another thing I noticed is that Fair Play definitely feels like a book that was written primarily for women. And there are some parts that I think are hard. And even I would like read a chapter and I'd be like, oh, <laughs> but I think it was also good for us to be able to have discussions together where we would say like, I don't perceive you that way. Like for me to say, yes, I hear like how this is kind of coming across in a negative way. Do I feel that way? Do I not feel that way? What are the caveats to that? And kind of giving some more explanation to that. Cause I think there is a lot of discussion in the wider world about like, oh, you're just a terrible person or you're a terrible dude because you're putting this load on me. And so it allowed us to have a more, I think, compassionate discussion around like, especially things like, oh, maybe we're both carrying the mental load around this. And the goal is not for me to like blame you and be angry that I'm still having to carry it. Let's make life easier on both of us by just having one of us carry it. And I think that that was really healing, I yeah, think, sure, right. um, for us to be able to say like, yes, this is what this book is saying. This is what the conversation is in the wider world. We're still a team and let's figure out how we can work more effectively as a team when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to share this and with, you know, prospective people that uh, might be looking at the program. Uh, really appreciate your, your time, your testimony, your, your energy. And I think you guys were you know, in the group. I really appreciated the level of um, vulnerability that I think you guys brought to a lot of the sessions because come in and I would say, all right, who wants to share? And I think a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to go first. And, you know, you guys would put your hands up often on the early side um, and you guys would share stuff. And, you know, Mike, you even let me call you out on the the comedy that you throw in and how sometimes <laughs> we're, we're very shy, very introverted. We don't like to hear ourselves talk, but no, keep going to keep telling us about ourselves. That's great. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really appreciate the participation that you guys have put in and um, thank you for your testimonial. And, and thank you for everything that you do, yeah. Zach. We really appreciate it. Much appreciated. Um, all right. I'm going to stop the recording there and I'll just.